Welcome to HSC Economics Made Easy. Did you know that HSC Economics is one of the hardest courses to get a band six in? And most students consider the extended response to be the hardest part of the economics exam. This video is part of a series that aims to make it easier to write a good extended response. This video in particular will unpack the components that make up a good band six essay. A good place to start looking would be past HSC examples. Let's look at the marking criteria to get into the A range. There are some differences in the presentation of this marking criteria, but there are also some common aspects that every A-range extended response contains. The first one that we'll look at is integrates relevant economic terms, concepts, relationships, and theories. The best responses are crammed full of economic words and concepts that are relevant. Relationships and theories are clearly and comprehensively unpacked with correct use of these economic words. I'll build on this point in a later criterion. This criterion is also satisfied by supporting your points with relevant examples and statistics as evidence. Without this, your response will be lacking in applicability, reflecting an understanding that is limited to just theoretical knowledge. Most HSC markers agree that in general, an ideal extended response should have 50% theory and 50% application, which means trends, stats, and examples. In stimulus responses, you often see this one, synthesizes own knowledge and understanding with the information provided. This is quite self-explanatory. You've got to refer to the stimulus in your essay. Now, you might be asking, how frequently should you refer to the stimulus? This will depend on the nature of the stimulus and the question. For example, if the stimulus is just a short quote, you could get away with just referring to it once. But if it's a multifaceted, lengthy analytical paragraph with various relevant points or a graph showing a range of useful statistics, you can spend whole paragraphs unpacking it to show applied understanding. In summary, try to use the stimulus as much as possible, at least once in your response. This next one is the most important criterion, as it greatly determines which range your response is going to end up in. Clear understanding is displayed when the links you make are detailed and thorough. A link that skips steps will be criticized as general and unclear, as the marker is left asking how or why would this happen? For example, if the exam asked to explain how A causes E, and you simply said, uh, A has a positive correlation with E, that would show a limited understanding as the link is left unclear. But if you said A causes B to happen, which then leads to C and D, resulting in E, that is showing a clear understanding as you've thoroughly unpacked the link. So make sure your links and processes include every relevant step. Comprehensive understanding is displayed when the links you make have depth and breadth. If the question is about causes of trends, cover more factors or go back further. If it's about impacts, cover more flow and effects. If it's a discussion about effectiveness or limitations, cover multiple perspectives and considerations. For example, you could look at pros versus cons or short-term versus long-term. But obviously, all of this is irrelevant unless your response answers the question. The criteria of whether you've answered the question is often combined with this dot point, like in 2017's question 26, although it could sometimes be its own dot point, like 2020 question 27. I'll have another video to help you ensure that you answer the question. So subscribe to make sure you don't miss that. And these are the reasons why this dot point is so critical. A response can be structured beautifully and written with sophisticated economic vocabulary. But if it doesn't answer the question in a clear and comprehensive way, it ends up in lower ranges because of this dot point. All right, this next criterion is where many students get stuck on, how to structure your essay. The final criterion that determines your essay mark is sustained, logical, and cohesive response. This refers to the structure and writing style. Markers will be asking, is your essay easy to follow? Is it broken down into reasonably sized and logical paragraphs that have distinct points? Is there a clear introduction and conclusion? And is your essay answering the question? A common trap for students is that they try to cover too many points, leading to shallow overviews of each point. The best responses often structure the responses to focus on just two to three main points or sections and then go into detail and depth or in other words, show clear and comprehensive understanding. That's why, as soon as you see the essay question, you need to ask yourself, how can I split my essay into two to three main points? Once you've planned your main points, you can start writing your introduction. The introduction to your essay is very important because it gives the marker a first impression of your essay. You wanna spend about 100 words doing the following in any order. You wanna address the question, define key terms and concepts, outline or list key points that you wanna cover and you want to refer to recent trends and stimulus that you'll be using in your essay. Now, before I get into the main body, let me talk about the conclusion. It shouldn't be very long. Two to three sentences, about 50 words, should suffice to wrap up your essay. 
All you're trying to do is close off your essay and show your marker that you didn't run out of time. All right, let's talk about word count. On average, a student should be able to write 800 to 1000 words in 40 minutes. With 100 words in the introduction and 50 words in the conclusion, that leaves approximately 600 to 800 words for your body paragraphs. As I've already stated, the best essays often have about two to three sections of body paragraphs. Divide your word count accordingly. For example, two sections with 300 to 400 words each, or three sections with 200 to 300 words each. Once you've decided your sections, what should the main body paragraphs look like in each section? Well, here are three structures ranging from basic to advanced. If you're just starting to write economic essays, particularly in year 11, this is the easiest structure to start off with. Option one is the theory example sandwich. You use a paragraph to explore the theory and then follow with a paragraph of examples and statistics to show application of theory and then repeat in the next section until you have two to three sections of four to six paragraphs. Option two is similar, but this time lead with the example paragraph first, then explain the theory behind it. You may choose this structure if the question is more centered around recent trends. The benefits of these two options is that they are clean and simple structures, making them easier for beginners. They also show a clear balance of theory and application, as there is a clear dedicated paragraph for each. However, they can cause repetition as you unpack the concepts and links once in your theory paragraph and then again in the example paragraph. They can also lead to large theory dumps before the example comes in, leaving an impression that you lack application. This is why I recommend that you work towards option three, the integrated method. In this structure, you explain your theory simultaneously with the example. You'll be using economic concepts and terminology while you unpack economic trends within the paragraph. The benefit of this is that it avoids the theory dumps as you show understanding and application. Also, by avoiding repetition, the response is more concise, meaning that you possibly have time to fit in a fourth section and extension concepts. Just be cautious with this method because paragraphs can end up very long as you're trying to fit in comprehensive amounts of theory and application. On the other hand, the paragraphs end up very short if you're unable to expand on the theory and examples. The key is obviously to practice. So in summary, step one is to pick the essay option that you're better at. The one that you know the most economic concepts, relationships, examples, and statistics. Take note of the directive verb that is being used as well. Step two is to identify two to three, maybe even four main points or sections for your essay. Again, choose points that you know the most concepts, relationships, examples, and stats. Step three, choose the paragraph structure that suits you and the question. Step four, write according to the plan. Keep an eye on time. If you have time remaining, consider a fourth section. Otherwise, just go over your essay to correct any mistakes. I hope I've given you more confidence to write a good extended response. And hey, one more tip. The best way to get good at writing essays is by practicing and getting feedback. I actually offer essay feedback and tutoring services. I can help you structure specific questions and assessments. I provide personalized feedback based on my experience as a HSC marker. Just reach out to me via the website, email, or social media. I'll put the links in the description. Also, check out my workbook. I made this to help you understand content and improve your writing style. 100% of the proceeds go to charity. If this video has helped you, please leave a like and comment as well as share this video. And make sure you subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss the next video. And I look forward to continuing to make HSC Economics easy for you. See you next time.